Our conversation today is about how history repeats itself. I never ever miss a chance to prove that. When I see the evidence in front of me, that's what I like to do today. I'd like to share how history is repeating itself. But also, we have some good news and we have some bad news. The good news is these two witches you're looking at here, these two evil witches have brought down the Democratic Party. And that's the good news. Good riddance to them. The bad news is that our government is corrupt and rotten to the core. You see, the names that you are looking at right now, these are the names of the people who are contributing to Hillary Clinton. You're going to find one thing all these people have in common. Actually, a couple things they have in common. The first thing is they're all dual citizens. They have no allegiance to the United States of America. No, their allegiance, their loyalty goes to another small little country that just happens to control our Federal Reserve notes. The other thing these people, the other thing that these people have in common is they're all friends with a system, a Federal Reserve system. Their friends are names like Ben Bernanke, Alan Greenspan, Janet Yellen. And like I said, they're all dual citizens. They're all one big happy family. And, and it's not a coincidence that they have all the money. And it's not a coincidence that they have, they're sharing just a little tiny bit of their money to a criminal like Hillary Clinton. You see, they've got so much money, it would scare you half to death. They don't want you to know how much money they got because this system, as I said, is so corrupt, so rotten to the core that if Americans actually knew how much money these dual citizens have and how much money they've taken out of the country and took it to Asia to keep it there for safekeeping. And like I said, if Americans actually knew, they would either go berserk or commit suicide because as Bernie Sanders started to tell people, the system's rigged. But people don't know how rigged it is. They just keep on, they got their blinders on and they go to their Burger King job and they try not to, for, they try to forget about it. Bernie Sanders put his little, he put his big toe into the equation. He told America that the system was rigged. Everybody knew it. And he was so amazed that millions and millions of people came onto his side only for one little fact. The system is rigged, people. These dual citizens have all the money and you've got nothing, and it's not right. And Bernie Sanders was amazed at how many people came over to his side. Only one problem. Bernie Sanders was a ringer. I repeat, Bernie Sanders was a ringer. He was put there. Does anybody think it was strange that Donald Trump had to go through, what, 18 contestants to win? Hillary Clinton had, what, two and then the people who were put there were ringers. Then they were never, ever supposed to beat Hillary. Hillary's nomination was supposed to be a coronation. This witch had no intentions of doing anything legally or fairly. No, this witch had two people put in there to go up against. Ringers. Bernie Sanders was a ringer. The only thing is what these career politicians don't understand is how mad Americans are. And then, so you get this old guy, Bernie Sanders. I mean, he's too old to be president. He's too dumb to be president. He's too stupid to be president. He's a socialist. And even a socialist, all the socialists had to say, all this commie son of a bitch had to say was, America, the system's rigged, and everybody went to his side. The career politicians, the establishment, they were in shock. They had no idea how many people hate Hillary Clinton. But Hillary Clinton, being the arrogant SOB she is, she didn't step down. She didn't retire into a peaceful life somewhere. No, she said, I'm going to keep this rigged system going. I'm going to, I'm going to beat Bernie anyhow, even though everybody hates my guts. I'm going to beat, oh, it was sickening. It was sickening to watch the whole thing. But you know what? Even as painful as it was to watch Hillary Clinton cheat and steal the election away from Bernie Sanders, as painful as it was, you know what was even more sickening? To watch Bernie Sanders sell out. I mean, does, 
You know Bernie Sanders has read this list. You know Bernie Sanders knows everybody on this list here. They're all dual citizens. Bernie Sanders is a dual citizen. It was sickening to watch Bernie Sanders sell out after taking in the young people. See, that's what really makes me mad. How everybody's been taken in, lied to. For example, look at these two people. They're Caucasians who pander to minority. Now, don't get me wrong. I got nothing against Caucasians. I'm a Caucasian myself. But you know what I don't like? I don't like it when Caucasians lie and what Caucasians, elite, elite Caucasians, pander to the minority, to the downtrodden. When they go out there and they pander to these people, and then, but who does Hillary Clinton pick as her vice president? A Caucasian male. I mean, am, am I the only one out there that sees the hypocrisy of this? Am I the only one out there that can see that Hillary Clinton is the biggest hypocrite in the world? I mean, how can this woman go for years and months and months and go from, go from town to town pandering only to minorities? Trust me on this one. When Hillary Clinton comes to Las Vegas, and she comes here quite a bit to pick up a lot of money. When Hillary Clinton comes to Las Vegas, there aren't no big crowds here. You know what there is? There's a little schoolroom full of minorities. It's pathetic. You never see that on mainstream media. If mainstream media actually showed when Hillary Clinton comes to Las Vegas, and I swear to God she's in the littlest schoolroom you can get, and they have about a half a dozen illegals in there, and mainstream media doesn't say a word, Nobody there to check green cards or identification because it's all a scam. And like I said, am I the only one out there who notices that everywhere Hillary Clinton went, she pandered and pandered and pandered, and when, who did, and then what did she pick? She picked a white Caucasian male as her vice president. I mean, these people that she's pandering to, they cannot be that stupid. I mean, you would think after years and years of this, these minorities would wake up and, you know what, why didn't she pick one of our people? You know why Hillary didn't pick one of your people? Because it's a scam. It's a crooked system. And these two evil witches have brought it down. So anybody who thinks they have a love for the Democratic National Party, you can forget about it. You're looking at the two evil witches who brought the Democratic Party down, and that's the good news. That's the good news, people. Because you got to find good news somewhere out of all this darkness that has come down upon the American Republic. you got to find a bright spot somewhere, and that's the bright spot. These two evil witches brought it down. Of course, it must be our lucky day, because there's one more bright spot out there. There's one more light at the end of the tunnel, and that would be WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is going to help us bring down these evil people. You see, evil cannot last. Evil always comes down eventually. And WikiLeaks is going to help us expose how Hillary is for sale. And this kind of brings us, this kind of brings us to the conversation I wanted to have today. And that's the main conversation. The main conversation, as I said, is how history repeats itself. Because what we're going through today is exactly what America went through during the Great Depression. So let me give you a little bit of background on what I'm talking about. Let's, take, let's go back to before the Great Depression. Everybody knows that before the Great Depression, that the Federal Reserve System, which, remember, was created in 1913, well, they went through a stage, a boom stage, or a boom era in the 1920s. You remember the movie, The Great Gatsby, with Robert Redford? I mean, read the book if you want to. Read the book again, The Great Gatsby. And the character that Robert Redford portrayed was a man who, he, he came to power and money and mansion through fake means, through the Federal Reserve System. Or should I just say fake paper? That's what it was in the 1920s, fake paper being pushed out by the criminals in the Federal Reserve System. Now, doesn't that sound a lot like what happened right before the housing crash? Because that's what happened starting in the late 90s, or actually you could probably say right around 2001 after the dot-com bubble collapsed. You see, that's what happened in modern times today. Let's come to the future now, or not the future, let's come to now. Back in 2001 and 2000, when the dot-com bubble bust, 
the Federal Reserve said, oh, no, we don't want to go through any pain and suffering. We don't want to have a little depression. So he started printing money. Alan Greenspan started printing money like a drunken sailor. And, of course, what did that produce? What that produced from 2000 to around 2007, that produced a housing boom. So I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to prove that the housing boom between 2000 and 2007 is exactly what happened back in the 1920s. This is how history is repeating itself, but there are unintended consequences of the Federal Reserve playing with our minds. See, that's what it comes down to. If you watch the movie The Great Gatsby and, and Robert Redford, the Federal Reserve was playing with his mind and he didn't even know it. The housing boom, all these people who borrowed fake paper from the Federal Reserve system. They borrowed the money. They borrowed $300,000 to buy a piece of shit track home in a desert somewhere. And then they paid their payments. Every month, they paid their $1,000 payments to the Federal Reserve system. And then five years later, the Federal Reserve pulls the plug. They start raising interest rates, and the whole housing boom comes collapsing down. And guess what? The banks then take back your asset. The banks then take back your property. You're left with nothing. But what happened for five years? You paid the banks $1,000 a month. Oh, sure, the banks went broke, oh, too, but the banks don't care. See, the banks are in a win-win uh, a situation. The banks never go broke. If the banks go broke, the government just gives them your money. So the banks never lose. You see, the banks took your money all that time, your $1,000 a month. The banks took it. And then when they collapsed the system in 07, 08, 09, when the system collapsed, they took your house back, they took your assets back, and then the government took your money, the government took your taxpayer money, and gave it to the banks. You see, the banks just won, 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 and nobody went to prison in the banks. Nobody in the banking system went to prison, but all the Americans went broke. Well, this is exactly what happened during the 1920s, when the Federal Reserve pushed out all that fake money, and they made guys like Robert Redford and his character, and the great Gatsby, they made his character look like he was a millionaire. But when it came all crashing down in the Great Depression, his character went broke. You see, you see how they don't teach this in the schools today? They don't teach you in the schools that history keeps on repeating itself. And that the Federal Reserve System is behind the whole goddamn mess. They don't teach this to the kids. Because if they taught the truth, the kids would grow up. And say, well, why don't we put the Federal Reserve down if they're such an animal? If the Federal Reserve is such an evil animal, why don't we put them down? There's been many presidents. There's been a couple presidents in our great history who has put the central bank down. All oh, the banks tried to assassinate them. Yeah. The banks will try to assassinate you. If you are a president who tries to take the central bank down, that private organization, they're not a government organization. They're a private set of bankers foreign bankers for that matter, and if there's any president who's strong enough, if there's any American out there strong enough who said, okay, I'm going to take your charter away, Federal Reserve, I'm going to take your charter away, well, they try to assassinate you. They've done it in the past, and they'll try to do it in the future. They're evil, I say. The bankers are evil. And is it any wonder, if you're a Gentile like myself, that we have to pick up the breadcrumbs. I mean, look at these numbers. These are numbers that they give away. I mean, Hillary Clinton's never made anything in her whole goddamn life. But yet, these dual citizens people, these people who get the free money from the Federal Reserve System, they got so much money in the billions that they can give away millions to a criminal like Hillary Clinton while you and I, the Gentile, have to pick up the breadcrumbs. I say, enough's enough. No wonder all the young people were mad when Bernie Sanders said the system is rigged. Hell yes, we know the system's rigged. We just want some adult out there, some adult to stand up and say, yeah, the system's rigged. These young children need leadership. And they, they look to crooked Bernie for leadership. He's no longer the Bernie. He's no longer feel the burn. Bernie is now the sellout. I've never seen anybody that has been a bigger sellout in my lifetime. The way that Bernie Sanders sucked those young people in, they 
They gave Bernie their heart and soul. They said, Bernie, you're for us. We feel it. We know it. And little did they know how evil Bernie was. That Bernie's just like the rest of the dual citizens. He's so evil that he sucked them in and then he went right to Crooked Hillary and he endorsed her. He's the biggest sellout America has ever known. But enough of that rant on Bernie, the sellout. I'm here to tell you how history repeats itself. How, what happened in the 1920s? Like I said, the Federal Reserve pushed all that paper out there. They created the boom area. And then they took it away. And then they, then they created the collapse. And why did they do that? So they can buy it back, everybody thing on pennies for the dollar. Think, don't ever forget that. The reason why the collapse is there is so the evil people can buy things for pennies on the dollar. Think about it. After the housing boom, and all of us were struggling to get by with buying the food. Most people have to have food stamps or a SNAP card to get by. But what does the Federal Reserve Bank do? They give their friends, the dual citizens, you know who they are. The dual citizens, they can have all the money they want to go buy up the houses. And now that they own all the houses, guess what they're going to do with those houses that they bought up for pennies on the dollar? They're going to rent them out to you and I. You see, because it's a master-slave system. And the only way this master-slave system works is if they have control of the Federal Reserve note and if they can create them by pushing a button. Okay, so now you say, okay, what are you talking about where history repeats itself? Well, I'm talking about, remember, back in the 20s when they made the boom and then they made the bust where they bought up everything on pennies and the dollar on the bust. Well, Americans didn't have any jobs back then. Just like today, Americans had no jobs. So what did the government do back then? The Democrats would sell you a job. All you had to do was donate money to the Democratic Party, and they would give you a job in the Works Progress Administration, the WPA system. They, they employed probably close to 10 million people. In a time when America had no jobs, this was very, very important. But the Democrats sold those jobs. Are you starting to get the picture here? Well, you will pretty soon. So even back in the 1930s, the Democrats were pulling the same number that Hillary Clinton and Wasserman Schultz is pulling today. All you had to do was give them money back then, and you would get a job. And back then, we had newspapers that had integrity. And back in 1938, we really had newspapers who exposed the truth. Today, we have no newspapers. Today, we have mainstream media prostitutes. But back then, it was exposed. And we even come up with a little law in America called the Hatch Act. You've probably heard me talk about it already, the Hatch Act, when I exposed all those government employees that came to Las Vegas, and they organized 4,000 people to go out there and protest against Trump. And they have a website that says, Vote for Hillary, or you'll lose your government job. Am I, is, is it starting to sink in that history repeats itself? The same damn thing that happened in 1930s, where the Democrats sold jobs to the WPA people, and then they got political influence. But it all had to do with, it all had to do with one thing with these politicians. You have to donate money to them, okay? So let's come up to today. Today... WikiLeaks, thank God there's a WikiLeaks, thanks God there's an internet. The internet, I believe, is going to bring these evil bastards down. But now the internet and WikiLeaks is now telling us again, a, genera a lifetime generation later. See, that's how these cycles work, I believe. I believe they work in uh, cycles of human lifespans. Human lifespan is around 70, 80 years. Now, here we are, 70, 80 years later, and Hillary Clinton and Debbie Wasserman Schultz doing the same damn thing. All you have to do is give them money, and they'll give you a job on a committee, a government board. And WikiLeaks is coming out with the whole thing. Before, remember, back in 1938, we had a real press. Remember that. In 1938, we still had somewhat of a journalist who exposed it back then. Today, we have no journalists in newspapers. Today, we have nothing but prostitutes. Remember that. So, who are the people today that are doing the job? It's people like WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks has to go in there and hack their emails. And WikiLeaks then proves 
that the Democrats, and, don't, and I, I, don't, I don't want to put this all on the Democrats because the Republicans are the same way. There is no difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. So I'll leave you with this. Yes, history repeats itself because when there are no jobs out there, then you have to turn to the government. And the government now has 40 million bloodsuckers on its payroll. Think about that for a moment because that's what really drives me. What drives me to go out there and speak out about these evil people is because I know these bloodsuckers right here have 40 million people on their payrolls. And I know that's going to end badly because I know that the 100 million American workers, the, wor the real workers out in the private sector, those 100 million, or some people say it's 120, but who cares, a hundred million private workers are not going to be able to pay the pensions for 40 million government bloodsuckers. I know that's going to end badly, and that's the reason why I speak out. Because I don't want my country to collapse into chaos. Nobody does. And I'm, and I'm kind of hoping and praying that maybe we catch ourselves. Maybe there's some powerful leader out there who could come out. Some powerful leader who can say, you know what, We've, we need to make this federal government smaller. We need, we need to let stop the federal government from persecuting and prosecuting people like the ranchers who have done nothing wrong, the ranchers Bundy who are in jail today. We need a powerful leader who can come up there and say, this government is out of control. They have, gr they have grown to a monster where they have 40 million bloodsuckers on the payroll. And then they, every single one of these bureaucrats go looking for an American to attack. And like the BLM bureaucrats, they go to the Bundy Ranch and they attack the Bundys. Why? Because they're ranchers and they try to make a clean living. These bureaucrats, these government workers, they don't want you to make a clean living like the ranchers Bundy. No, they want you under their thumb. And this rant, I know, has gone on too long. So I'm going to cut it short now. The fact of the matter is, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. We know that the government's too big. We know that the government has to be cut in size. They have to be cut in half, or maybe they have to be cut down to baby size.